All right, awesome. This brings us to startups and what people are recommending to build in 2025. So both A16Z and Y Combinator released their, you know, Y Combinator actually released their request for startups for winter 2025. And then A16Z released their big ideas in tech for 2025. So I can just kind of run through these and Emmanuel, we can talk about what's interesting, but these are two companies that fund A16Z is the biggest venture capital firm in the world and fund a lot of the most interesting new innovative companies in the world. Y Combinator is the most successful startup accelerator in the world and focuses a lot on, you know, high growth software startups, um, but also has, you know, some moonshots as well and, you know, more ambitious projects. And these guys look at companies and pitches every day. And this is what they recommend uh, is going to happen in 2025 and what you should be building in 2025. So if we start with A16Z, first category is American dynamism. So the nuclear resurgent, AI, nuclear resurgence rather. AI data centers will drive unprecedented demand for nuclear power, reviving decommissioned plants and spurring new reactor construction. A lot of talk about this in Europe as well. A lot of talk in Sweden about this. What can happen to lower energy costs and then make manufacturing more viable? The second category under American dynamism, hardware software jobs, growing demand for engineers who can bridge hardware software gaps, in manufacturing, robotics, and industrial automation. Number three, the space frontier, as we talked about earlier. I'll try to run through this a little bit quicker so that we don't spend too long. So I'll just kind of rip through this. Second category is bio and health. So anything focused on solving common diseases, health tech democratization. We're seeing, I mean, look at what LLMs are doing to health tech. It's making it way easier to get information you need at your fingertips. AI super staffing in the health industry. Uh, third category is consumer specialized AI video, AI memory banks, personalized knowledge work, qualitative data analysis. Fourth category is crypto, of course, coming from A16Z. These guys are backing crypto. They believe in the blockchain like nobody else. So that's, you know, one of their main focuses. AI wallets, autonomous chatbots focused on decentralized autonomous chatbots that will emerge as independent entities. Proof of personhood, crypto app stores. Next category, enterprise fintech, pretty standard stuff. Uh, AI native interfaces kind of stands out to me. I definitely think everything's going to be rebuilt with LLMs in mind and AI native functionality in mind. Gaming, of course, gaming just continues to explode. So AI native storytelling, living AI companions, baseless creators. You know, this gaming, I think, is going to just get so cool because it's going to be better storytelling, better game development, more customization. So really, I think the next 10 years of gaming is going to be unreal to watch. Uh, second to last category, growth stage tech. So search disruption. So Google's getting disrupted, obviously. You know, who's going to take that space? Uh, sales renaissance. AI automation will lead to increased hiring of sales representatives. Interesting. Infrastructure, AI computing centers, edge AI growth, and AI reasoning progress. Cool. So, yeah, more information here if you want to check it out. But... And obviously, plenty of podcasts where uh, Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz talk about this type of stuff, as well as other A16Z partners. But anything that jumps out to you, Emmanuel? Uh, I think maybe, well, the first thing that I that came to my mind is when you said health tech, especially the AI super staffing, I was just imagining myself being in a, for dental checkup, you know, mm -hmm. and then just having a robot just go into your teeth and checking everything up and fixing all the things that you need. Uh, I mean, yeah, right. It was just a kind of kind of humorous idea that I had in my mind, and I think it would be quite funny to see as well. But I think it'll be also quite interesting to see how that affects uh, costs as well. If we think about how much does it then cost to go to a dentist, for example, if you 
because usually, for example, in Germany, we also have this crisis going on there. And I'm pretty sure it's also in other countries as well that you have uh, staffing problems, that they're not enough staff compared to the, the people coming in to hospitals or private clinics. So basically, yeah. it'll be interesting to see if that could maybe create cheaper costs for people then to get their uh, dental health care or their, their yearly checkups. Uh, yeah. And then Definitely. another one that I found pretty interesting was the gaming aspect. I think we covered this also in the last episode where we talked about Sora AI. I think mm -hmm. that would be just incredible to see how good the graphics will look like at some point, because I think mm -hmm. there was, I forgot, I forgot which post this was from or who said this. And they mentioned that a huge, a huge problem with game development and realism is that you can't video games can't be too realistic or can't be extremely realistic because if vegans try to do this and they're not as realistic as possible then it kind of turns off the engagement or the attractiveness of that video game so it's either you develop the game that isn't 100 realistic or you try to achieve a 100% realistic physics, mm -hmm. all that stuff into a video game. And I think mm -hmm. now with uh, now with AI kind of contributing to now video generation, I think we could see some really, uh, uh, some huge advancement in the gaming industry in terms of graphics, in terms of visuals. So I think that would be pretty cool. Definitely. I just think very soon, the developers are going to be so much more focused on the details, but the generation of these massive maps of all of all of this information is going to be so much faster. Like, I don't see why, you know, I used to play World of Warcraft a bit, um, but if you look at even, you know, some of the newer games that are out there um, as well, where you have these massive worlds you can go into and play, I don't see why you're not going to be able to customize those. You know, maybe there's something that you don't like about this raid or this quest, um, or you just think that you could make it better or something that's more customized to you and your friends when you're playing together, where, you know, you want to be able to have a giant basketball hoop as a sword, or you want this. It's, it's like augmenting the game is going to be so much easier because things like building out the pixels for that are going to be very fast. And maybe it's messed up, and the basketball hoop has like three backboards, but maybe that's funny. So who cares, right? It's just, <laughs> I think it's going to move fast and you're going to be able to, yeah. you're not going to need people grinding away on the details of these pixels for the tree or these lakes or whatever you're trying to build. So creativity is going to explode where it's not just the people like laying the Minecraft bricks, but it's the people working with the LLMs to design their own world. And, you know, you can do the pixel details as well, but you can get so much more heavy lifting done. So definitely. Yeah. I just had just a funny comment to this. I know we still don't have GTA 6 out yet, but maybe G GTA 7 will be a lot faster out with, with AI yeah. becoming that, that Definitely. Game. I mean, Google said that a quarter of their code is being written by AI. So if the game studios are anywhere close to that, that's going to increase their effectiveness so much. And maybe you'll even see smaller game studios really resurge because if the cost of building a really good game goes down, it's more about creativity and like what hits. And so it's more likely that a small team can build a really good game, which is awesome. All right, cool. So now let's dive into YC's request, request for startups, winter 2025, and see what the top accelerator in Silicon Valley has to say. So they have five categories here. First, government and public safety. Build LLMs to automate specific government tasks, create computer vision systems for license plate detection and crime prevention. Of course, Silicon Valley is trying to figure out crime prevention because they're just just drowning in crime there of course just i mean they got to get it together you got to get better leadership in san francisco that's for sure <laughs> build software that reduces police paperwork time from hours to minutes create tools for emergency response coordination and dispatch 
build platforms that help communities and law enforcement communicate effectively. Interesting, they have a whole category on this, uh, specifically like government and crime uh, reduction, but cool to see. Second, manufacturing. Build ML-powered robotic systems that reduce labor costs in U.S. manufacturing. Create automation tools specifically for American factories. Build specialized industrial robots for factory inspection. Develop systems that help manufacturers operate efficiently in U.S. industrial hubs. Uh, third category, chips and engineering. Build LLM tools specifically for FPGA design and optimization. Create AI systems for ASIC design that reduce development costs. Build tools that optimize specialized computation. Develop AI-powered CAD software. Uh, fourth category, stable coins. Interesting, a whole category on stable coins specifically. Build platforms for businesses to hold and manage stable coins, create tools to make it easy for developers to integrate stable coin payments, build systems for banks to issue their own stable coins, develop infrastructure for cross-border stable coin payments. And finally, new jobs. Create tools to help people run local service businesses. Build platforms enabling people to earn income providing services online. Create systems that help service providers work more effectively with AI assistance. Develop tools that help small businesses operate at the same level as large corporations. It's a really focused list from YC, I have to say. Like the government policy uh, area is very interesting. It's, and I think some of this also has to do with where they see demand and where they think they have partnerships that need this. So obviously where is a good place to have crime technology? San Francisco would be a great place to have better crime technology. Manufacturing is a huge topic right now. So they're focused on that. AI chips, stable coins. Also, I've been hearing a lot of chatter about how useful stable coins are. Uh, SpaceX is actually using stable coins to take payment from international users of Starlink so that they don't have to take the foreign exchange risk. Um, interesting to see. And then, yeah, online services and running businesses more effectively, kind of like bread and butter uh, software improving the way the businesses work. So interesting list. What do you think, Emmanuel? Yeah, I might be one of those people who <laughs> enjoy stable coins as well. <laughs> Yeah, nice. I yeah. I use it mainly to yeah also to transfer money because it's just that much quicker, reliable, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. no weird fees behind something. But then at the same time, I wonder because now you have all these other newer <laughs> payment methods, right? Like Wise, you have uh, Revolut, and they're now making this also a lot more quicker, a lot more easier, and faster to receive money, send money. Etc. Obviously, it doesn't have that decentralization to it uh, as stablecoins have, but it, it will be interesting. But for sure, I mean, seeing this expand, I mean, I know about well the main stablecoins, for example, that I I have sent or received was USDT or USDC, for example. Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, there's a Euro stablecoin as well. I haven't looked that much into it, but. Uh, it, what it platform do you use to buy and sell the stable coins? Uh, Crypto.com. Crypto.com. Okay. Yeah. Not FTX? But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately not. I think it's not just because Crypto.com is kind of a little bit easier to use in the EU because Europe has so many regulations. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting so. to hear. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, WISE is definitely really easy, but, mm -hmm. you know, you're still paying fees on quite a lot of stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, yeah. the stable coins just seem easier. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, yeah, but, those are the those are the two lists for startups for A16C and YC. So really interesting stuff. And, of course, you can also see the startup directory for YC to see a lot of the companies that they've funded. Great place to get ideas and see what people are building. So highly recommend you stay in the loop on what these guys are doing. Uh, sorry, did you have something to add? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I uh, just adding to what you said before about uh, not Starlink, it's the company called SpaceX uh, mm -hmm. accepting. Oh yeah, exactly. SpaceX accepting payments 
via stable coins for their starting uh, for international subscriptions. I actually find that quite interesting, and I would love to see this also uh, become more prominent in, at other stores. Perhaps maybe you'll be able to pay with stable coins uh, uh, for Google services and products. I mean, it's very interesting. And I think there mm -hmm. a lot of work can be done within this within this area. Definitely, there are several Euro stable coins. So both Tether and Circle have a Euro stable coin, oh, okay. as well as several others. So yeah, really interesting.